Welcome back to Cocktails and Crankshafts. Today I wanted to do something a little different. Um, I mentioned that I'll be entering my first autocross of the season coming up here this weekend. And um, not everybody that visits this channel necessarily knows what an autocross is. So I thought I would go over the basics and sort of give a quick autocross 101 class. So what is autocross? Autocross is a form of motorsport where cars and drivers compete to record the lowest elapsed time through a temporary course typically made of orange traffic cones. The object is to be the fastest car through the course without upsetting any cones. More on that later. Courses are typically laid out in large parking lots, defunct or otherwise unused airport runways, or other places with large paved surfaces, no traffic, and few obstacles. I've done autocrosses in community college parking lots, um, ghost malls, you name it, um, defunct runway, defunct airports or airports with an inactive runway for one reason or another. Um, all these places make good spots to have autocrosses, particularly runways because they're big, they're flat, and they don't have curbs or trees or light poles in the middle of them like a parking lot sometimes does. The cars. So although most autocrossers you meet compete in some form of performance vehicle, um, nearly any type of car that isn't prone to rolling over can be driven in an autocross. And what I mean is the car should be fundamentally safe. It should have good tires, good wheel, bear wheel bearings, a working brake pedal, a throttle return spring, or some other means that when you remove your foot from the pedal, the throttle returns back to the idle position and uh, just generally safe, you know, functioning seat belts, a solid windshield without a bunch of cracks in it, things like that. Um, within that, um, there can be exceptions for trucks and SUVs and extreme high performance vehicles. And it's not that these vehicles are banned necessarily, it's just in some cases, um, they may be forced into certain categories or class restrictions, or they may be subject to the whims of the local safety steward who says, nope, that truck's too tippy, you can't do that. Or that SUV's too tippy, rides too high off the ground, I'm not gonna let you compete in that. The flip side of that is your ultra high performance cars, sort of like your, your hyper cars and your exotics. Oftentimes there's not a class for them or they may be pushed into a class with a pure race car just because those kind of cars aren't very common and so there's no uh, defined class for them in the rule book. So cars are classed based on their specific uh, performance potential, their level of modification, the driver skill, i.e. the novice class, or the tire type, i.e. the street tire class. Um, in some cases, a car's raw time can be modified or handicapped to determine which driver was the fastest that day, even taking into account the performance differential between, say, a pure racing car, a go-kart, or an economy two-door hatchback. As I mentioned earlier, the goal is to be the fastest through the course without upsetting cones. For each cone that is struck, there is a two second penalty assessed. And since a typical autocross time might be in the 50 to 60 second range, and the difference between first and second place might be as little as half a second, a two second penalty is pretty much a disqualification. Now some details about cones and penalties. The base of a cone is usually set in a box outlined with chalk or with white shoe polish. If you strike a cone, but it stays upright and any part of that cone is still within its original box, that is not a penalty. There is no penalty assessed for that. If you strike a cone and it stays upright, but leaves the box entirely, that is a penalty. If you strike a cone and knock it over, whether it's inside the box or outside the box, that is a penalty. In theory, you could run over a cone, flip it up into the air, and if it were to land back upright with any portion of it touching its original box, that would not be a penalty. Now, I've never seen that happen, but that's the extreme case we always give. On the course, there are what we call pointer cones. They are laying down already, uh, ostensibly to form an arrow to tell you which direction to go. Those cones 
you can run them over without penalty because they're already laying down although typically they are behind a cone that is live and so if you can run over that pointer cone without hitting the 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 cone that's in the box you've done something uh, magical within the boundaries of time and space now hitting a cone is not the only way to accrue a penalty cones typically mark the layout of the course and often define gates air quotes that cars need to pass through or which direction a car should enter or exit a slalom i.e. the pointer cone should you miss a gate or go the wrong way around a directional feature that results in a DNF, a did not finish, which is essentially disavowing that run. So basically a disqualification. Um, there are many other rules, tips, and tricks that you need to know to be a successful autocrosser, but that's why your local car club will have a website or a rookie school or experience instructors to help you along. If this video gets a good response, I'm happy to dig deeper into a particular minutia of autocross culture or answer specific questions you can hit me up on twitter my twitter tags at the end of the video or you can go in the comment section below and ask specific questions or tell me if you'd like to hear more information if i get a good response maybe i'll record more autocross videos in the future as always thanks for listening and we look forward to seeing you again soon bye thank you for watching cocktails and crankshafts if you enjoy my content please like share and subscribe be sure to hit the bell icon and we'll see you soon with new content.